Welcome, ev welcome everyone to this uh, uh, presentation about uh, uh, how to extend uh, uh, Monasca uh, from the data gathering point of view and uh, some reporting capabilities. I am uh, Stefano Canepa. I am uh, from Italy, so I beg your pardon about my poor English. Uh, but I work, uh, I live and work in uh, Goli as a cloud solution engineer and uh, doing things with uh, OpenStack, obviously, and uh, Monasca sometimes, and uh, most of the time about uh, working with monitoring and logging. And uh, I'm Don Walsh, I'm from Galway, and uh, basically everything he said, only slightly less so. Okay, uh, I know someone in the, in the room uh, uh, already knows what is Monasca, uh, so, uh, if it's okay, we are going to present a little bit of what is Monasca. If uh, everyone knows what it is, we can skip this part. Anyway. Uh, Show of hands, do we need to explain Monasca in detail? Okay, we can go. Got a couple, okay. Okay, so uh, Monasca is uh, the monitoring for OpenStack as an OpenStack uh, project uh, and uh, is uh, uh, made in a way that, uh, to be completely scalable, uh, high performant and fault tolerant. Uh, and uh, uh, being an OpenStack project uh, is multi-tenant too. It's based on microservice uh, uh, bus architecture. That means that every single service is uh, communicated through a, a single message queue. Uh, for uh, all the information, uh, you can get, uh, go to uh, monasca.io, that is the website for the project. And um, the Monasca team is uh, looking good for a new, to introduce new features and uh, changes, and so uh, we, we are getting a, a um, set up a survey uh, about uh, your monitoring uh, uh, needs and what you are using, etc. And so, if you go to the URL that is uh, uh, shortened there, uh, it could be of great help for us for the future. The architecture of Monasca is more or less this one. Okay, maybe we are missing some pieces. Uh, there is uh, uh, the, at the center, the message queue, that is uh, Kafka. And then uh, the biggest play, uh, thing is the Monasca API, uh, that is the connection to the outside world uh, where uh, the pieces are connecting the two Monasca and to get uh, data or to get uh, other things and to act on Monasca, to configure things, etc. Then there is the, the Monasca persister. The persister write uh, uh, all the measurement, all the points, everything that is uh, uh, that need to be recorded as a time uh, on a time series database. Uh, the uh, this data is a big amount of data, so is not stored in the configuration database. While the configuration database is. Uh, the OpenStack uh, uh, provided database, so MySQL or Postgres. And then uh, there is the Monasca, the threshold engine uh, that uh, process matrix measurement and determine the alarm states. The notification engine is uh, where all the uh, metrics are collected from, uh, and um, the, sorry, where uh, um, all, uh, if uh, a, an alarm uh, change state, uh, uh, the notification happen. The notification engine uh, uh, can notify with using different, in different ways the external world. So there are some uh, uh, default plugin, uh, but uh, based, um, uh, based on the fact that uh, is uh, a, a plugin architecture, uh, you can write your own uh, uh, plugin and extend uh, the notification uh, engine. The uh, Monasca agent that is uh, on the top is uh, where all the collection uh, uh, is done, and so all uh, the data is uh, origin from the uh, Monasca agent. And then there are uh, the log APIs that uh, uh, are not uh, in that uh, uh, diagram, 
uh, that uh, are an announcement uh, to integrate uh, logging inside uh, Monasca. Uh, the UE is integrated uh, into uh, Horizon and uh, use even uh, Grafana to, uh, to show user the data and uh, uh, so it's not just uh, uh, the, the Horizon UE provides you uh, interaction with alarm definition and all the other things, but uh, uh, graphs are provided using the Grafana. And then there is even a, a, a new uh, Kibana uh, that uh, uh, is, there is a Monasca Kibana plugin uh, to integrate Kibana with uh, the Keystone authentication so that uh, uh, Kibana can be run by the tenant uh, to show what uh, is related to this tenant uh, and not uh, everything that is on the system. Just to introduce some uh, terminology. Uh, we, in Monasca, we have um, what we call the metric uh, is uh, what we need to monitor. Dimension are the properties inside the metric that identify the, that then identify uh, every single dimension, value of dimension, helps in identifying the metric it belongs to an host name, a role, a service, uh, or something like that. Then there are events. Events are the both things that uh, are generated by Monasca, or uh, events are uh, what uh, Monasca uh, consumes uh, uh, from the uh, um, OpenStack uh, uh, infrastructure. Measurements are point in time of a metric. So uh, a metric is like a, an object, uh, a, 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 a class, uh, and the measurement is a, a single object at every single instance. Uh, alarm definition, they are not alarm, but they, they are made of, they are the rules uh, that determine if something uh, that happened on the system uh, is uh, a, a, an alarm, is, an alarm, and then there is the alarm state. So the alarm uh, can have free state, alarm, okay, on, undetermined. Undetermined looks like a little bit strange, but uh, if you think about uh, uh, a VM that uh, is monitored by Monasca, the VM is down. This is not an error because it's turned off, and so the alarm goes undetermined. And while if the, uh, if the VM is, need to be run uh, in run state, but it is down, this is an, uh, an error. Okay, so the transition is different because a VM uh, broke down while a VM is turned off. Okay, so what we are going to, to this is more or less the introduction of what Monasca is, then uh, uh, what we uh, did uh, to extend Monasca. And uh, we, st we started from uh, customer requirements. Uh, we are a consulting group, and so uh, we have customers asking us to do changes. And uh, uh, the, the first case that uh, we are showing you is uh, how to uh, extend Monasca uh, to uh, collect data from uh, a storage cluster, that is, in this case, is a VSA, uh, store virtual, and that is uh, used at the customer as a Cinder uh, backend. The customer uh, re requested us uh, to have more data than uh, the one uh, that uh, the Cinder uh, uh, check provides inside Monasca. Then uh, uh, we had uh, the same customer asked us uh, to get the uh, alarms uh, and into the, your own uh, alerting system. And so we use uh, a SNMP trap uh, to integrate into this alerting system. And uh, uh, to generate, uh, we were asked to generate uh, reports, uh, periodical reports about uh, the status of the OpenStack cloud. And so we, we uh, create them asking to Monasca about uh, uh, what are the data. And then uh, we were asked to, in reality, two different customers ask us more or less the same thing, uh, that is uh, uh, integrate Monasca in a Nagios compatible uh, uh, monitoring system. Okay, then I think it's okay. your part. 
Okay, uh, the part that I'm going to talk about is that little green block up on the top right there, uh, and it's the actual integration with the agent to be able to provide the monitoring for these, this storage cluster that we wanted to talk to. Um, now, in this case, we're talking about a storage system, but it could be applied to anything that you really want to monitor. So, in this case, the things we had to do, we had to figure out what data we needed, we needed to figure out how to get it, and we needed to figure out how to get that and push it into Manaska. Now, the obvious candidate for this is to look at the agent, which is installed on anything that needs to be monitored or to monitor. And uh, that, because that can be extended with plugins, that is the obvious candidate here. Uh, the things we needed, just for the sake of example, we needed things like the number of viable replicas. We needed if there, to know if there were unrecoverable errors. We needed to figure out how much free space there was. Kind of a no-brainer, really. Uh, performance data, stuff like that. So. Speaking about the Manask agent, like I said, it needs to be installed on anything that either needs to monitor or needs to be monitored. Uh, it will collect data from two sources. Now, anything that, that understands StatsD is one source. That's kind of outside the scope of this, so we're not going to talk about that right now. The other is what they call checks. So these are just plugins. So Manaska comes with quite a lot out of the box, so it's, it's already very flexible. But you can also add your own custom checks, and these checks come in a couple of parts, and I'm going to just talk about that in a little more detail. Um, as with all of the other components here, this is, these are just Python scripts, so it's pretty easy to, to extend. So um, there are two, they, they, they can come in kind of two pieces almost. Um, the, I, I've mentioned the detection here and the check. The, the check is the one that always exists insofar as that it is what actually reaches out to the thing being monitored and asks it, asks it questions and gathers the information for Manaska. It can also optionally have the d a detection component, which is what essentially configures the check. So it can go off and perform initial testing or just verifying that your configuration is OK or whatever you need, and then will write a configuration file that the check plugin will then use. So in terms of when they're actually run, as you can see there, the detection is only really run at startup or at configuration. So when the Manask agent starts, if you try to reconfigure Manask on uh, the agent on a particular node, or you can explicitly tell Manask, I want you to, to configure this plugin, and off you go. The check is then run by a component of the agent called the collector on a regular basis. I'll show you that in a moment. OK, so in the particular case of our store virtual or VSA cluster. We had two different APIs we could speak to. One was HTTP, and one was essentially SSHing into it and requesting information, which we could then get back as XML and parse. Um, we couldn't quite get what we wanted from either or the other, so we needed to combine both. The problem we found with that was is that what we could get from the REST API we get quickly, and it didn't put any particular load on the system, but it missed some key performance stuff which is really the most important part of this in a way. So instead of that, we had to reach out to this so-called SANIQ interface and grab information from that. But every request was slow and demanding on the system, so we needed to be careful about it. So in the beginning, we thought we could just roll these checks into one plugin and just run that repeatedly. But the problem we found was is that essentially we were loading down the cluster by trying to hit it for too many requests. So the solution we came up with was to split it into two. We could individually schedule these two components, these two check plugins, so that the rest one could be run relatively quickly, and the SSH flavor could be run on a much slower basis, because to be honest, the data that was, wasn't needed at the same interval, the same regularity as what was coming from the REST interface. Uh, one of the advantages of the, the Manask agent is that you can individually schedule each check, so you can tell it how long between each pass and how, how many passes it should gather before it pushes them off to Manaska. So it's quite useful that way. Um, so the approach we used was we wrote a single detection plugin, which read from a sort of a master source configuration file. And its job was to essentially check that the clusters that we'd specified existed, and then just to write the configuration files for the two check plugins. Um, so like I said, single plugin, very handy. Now, normally, if you're running something, if you're monitoring something with Manaska agent, you put the agent on the thing you want to monitor. That way, if the thing fails, the agent fails. It's pretty obvious that something has gone wrong. Unfortunately for us, we weren't in a position to be able to put 
the Monask agent on the storage cluster, so we had to improvise and just connect from outside. Uh, so this brings an extra point of failure, obviously, because you could have the thing that's doing the monitoring fail, or you could have the thing being monitored fail, or both. So we needed to figure out which is which. So in order to cheat that a little bit, we r ran multiple instances. So in our two customer cases for this, we had a cluster of monitoring nodes which we could use for this purpose. So we essentially installed a copy of this plugin on all three of the monitoring nodes in the cluster and cheated ever so slightly because um, Zookeeper is a component that's used by Monasca anyway and it already has its own leader election process. So what we basically did was asked it nicely, okay, are you the leader of this cluster? Yes, okay, if that's the case, run the plugin. If not, skip and wait. So that way we got essentially a redundant cluster for very little cost. It's not an ideal solution. It's something that we want to replace with a, a, something a little bit smarter, but for the purposes of, of our tests, it worked just fine. Um, the other thing, as I said, because the two different APIs essentially were, had different performance um, overhead, we were able to tune and tweak the configuration in terms of how frequently they were called in order to not load down the cluster with too many requests, but get information at a usable frequency for the customer. Right, this is just a very quick walkthrough of a kind of a, in time more than in, in like anything else to determine how it is that this process runs. First thing is the agent starts up. The second one is that the detection plugins get run. These can, op these can optionally generate configuration files. And as I'll speak to you in a minute, configuration files have two important components. They actually configure both the collector, which is what runs the checks, and it configures the checks themselves. So there we go. The check plugins will then go off, gather whatever information they need, and then that all gets collected by the collector, which sounds a bit obvious, and then on a scheduled interval, will then push that information out to the forwarder, which will then package that up and push it to the Manaska API so that Manaska as a whole can process it. Now, it kind of marks the API here in a little box because this part of the diagram could belong to a node that's somewhere beyond, like on a, on a, separate, a separate node to the monitoring that we're actually doing here. So it just wants to kind of indicate that separation. Okay. All right, just a quick run through where things are if you want to go do this yourself. Um, on the nodes themselves, uh, slash Etsy slash Monasca slash agent there is where all the agent files live. You can see the path there for the master configuration file and for the folder that contains all the config files that these detection plugins are generating. So one per file, it's important the names match, otherwise Monasca won't pick them up. Uh, the one other comment I make there is that you can see there's two folders there, the checks and detect folders, and that's where the actual plugins live. So you just drop your Python files in there and then when you either reconfigure or uh, restart Manaska, it'll reach in and start up the, the necessary plugins as it needs to. So uh, I mentioned that the configuration files have two kind of jobs, and those jobs are to configure the collector and to actually configure the plugins. So in the case of the configuration files, they're YAML, and you've basically got two things. You've got a dictionary called an itconfig, which, as you can see there, describes how to tell the collector how to run the plugin, and in other words, how frequently and how often you then relay that information that it's packaged up and stored. The other is this list of instances. So each instance, in this case, would be a storage cluster, but could be whatever you want to monitor. So you provide a dictionary for each of these items that describes what it is, how to get to it, any login credentials, any parameters, whatever else you need in order to perform the checks. Now, I think I hand back at this point. We're talking about notification forwarding, yep. Stefano. Okay. So now we switch to the notification engine. And uh, uh, we, we start working uh, with uh, an old version of Monasca that uh, was uh, where the notification uh, engine was not uh, uh, plugin based. So what we uh, what we're supposed to do is to work around uh, and use uh, the web walk that was at the time the only uh, flexible way to get data out of uh, Monasca. Uh, 
In practice, the identification engine at the time uh, had three ways of uh, getting notification, and um, the email was the, mo the one most frequently set up, uh, then the web book, and uh, uh, then picture duty. And uh, so through the web, the web book interface is uh, basically a post with uh, some JSON data that uh, is uh, uh, forwarded to a new URL that uh, is configured in the notification engine. Uh, the, so what we developed was a, a web box service, so the part that is in the center, the center part of this uh, um, picture. And this webhook service is an independent service uh, uh, running uh, on the, the same uh, control plane cluster, um, running uh, in a HA so using the same infrastructure uh, that the control plane used, so HR proxy in our case. And uh, uh, this service uh, uh, is able to uh, receive this uh, JSON uh, data, parse, uh, select uh, the field that uh, uh, the customer need to be uh, present in the uh, SNMP trap and then generate uh, uh, an SNMP trap. Everything was developed using uh, uh, Twisted Python, uh, that is a, natu a, a network event driven uh, uh, library. Uh, this, the biggest reason is that because I know uh, before and uh, the, the code is uh, really compact to, to manage all these things. And uh, we provided the customer with uh, MIB that, uh, uh, so is the managed information base uh, um, for uh, uh, SNMP, so that uh, the SNMP trap receiver can load this, uh, uh, this configuration file and uh, understand what is uh, in the SNMP trap and translate it uh, into something reasonable for the user. Uh, this, <coughs> this is working. Uh, the um, only mm, uh, drawback of this uh, architecture is that uh, uh, being two different uh, systems, uh, the notification engine running on its own and the webhook service running on its own, uh, they, they can disconnect each other and so the webhook can go down and, uh, or, and, and, the, and the notification engine can be um, unable to connect. And so we were forced to uh, configure the notification engine to resend uh, periodically all the notification. This um, um, resulted into uh, a little bit of flood of identical traps that uh, uh, the SNMP trap receiver uh, uh, was forced to, uh, to filter. So there is, the SNMP receiver is not, uh, um, uh, this solution works, but it's not ideal. The new way is, if it appears, okay, um, is better because the uh, notification engine takes care of retransmission using the message, uh, the, the message queue as, uh, uh, and so if something goes wrong in sending the notification, uh, the notification engine get the, the data and uh, take it in, into a queue of things that need to be uh, resent. And uh, uh, so uh, every plugin is again rescheduled for the resend, to resend till this notification uh, is really delivered or a number of retry that can be configured if I remember correctly. And uh, so in this way, the SNMP receiver, uh, the SNMP receiver you can avoid to create filters uh, for uh, and uh, to uh, and uh, you are sure that uh, notification are sent just once and uh, you are sure that uh, they are sent okay um, in the meanwhile uh, the uh, i developed the, the notification plugin too uh, and it's a little bit different because the uh, information available uh, are more, and instead of just mapping uh, the customer request to the SNMP trap, uh, the, the, the MIB actually maps everything that is available in the notification uh, data to an SNMP trap. 
uh, that I think it's a better solution. Then, uh, as we told, we, we were asked to create um, a report, a periodical report, uh, about the status of the cloud. In this case, we interfaced uh, with Monasca using uh, Monasca uh, APIs. And uh, um, this is what uh, uh, we had to do. That is, uh, create, uh, get uh, an input, uh, the start date, the end date, uh, and uh, the data to be collected. Data to be collected, uh, the were, uh, we defined uh, some aggregation of data, and so we, had, uh, uh, we, we agreed with the customer uh, about uh, mm, el, mm, uh, sets of data that need to be collected, like uh, disk usage uh, or uh, compute outages uh, or something like that. And uh, uh, we developed a, a Python uh, uh, script that, uh, uh, given this free input, uh, collect data using the Monasca API, and uh, uh, so collect measurements, and then elaborate uh, uh, the store them in a temporary database, do its own elaboration, and then output uh, a, a PDF file. Uh, with uh, uh, some graph representation, and uh, the side effort, uh, the, uh, the temporary storage uh, uh, is a, um, a comma-separated value file uh, that uh, uh, is left uh, to the user for uh, um, further elaboration if they need to import uh, in a spreadsheet and do some other uh, uh, calculation that they like. Integration with uh, uh, Nagios is again done using the uh, Monasca API because again we, we need uh, measurement. In this case, what we need is uh, measurement uh, uh, more or less real time. So uh, while the, uh, in the previous, uh, in the statistical report, uh, we were uh, <clears throat> periodically running and asking the APIs for measurement. This is a still a periodic run of a, a Nagios plugin, but uh, the Nagios plugin uh, run really frequently. Uh, and uh, uh, through the Monasca API, get the measurement uh, of the data that uh, was collected. And uh, doing um, a little bit of calculation about time, we were able to uh, just give last measurement uh, uh, evaluated, and so that uh, uh, with uh, a metric definition. So the input, and the, the <clears throat> if you are not familiar with Nagios, Nagios checks are uh, literary scripts that can be uh, executable, that can be run, uh, uh, can be written in uh, um, your preferred language. And they, at the end, they need to output on uh, the uh, on the system the measurement, uh, the uh, uh, and some other data and the statistical data at the end. Uh, then, <coughs> in the, the measurement, the unit, uh, and uh, the level of the alarm. And then uh, what we did, we developed uh, actually two uh, different uh, uh, scripts uh, with uh, identical interface. So the uh, common line required uh, uh, a specification of the uh, metric dimension that need to be uh, collected. So there is a little bit of uh, uh, qu quite a lot uh, of configuration because the customer need to run exactly the same uh, Nagios uh, uh, check with uh, uh, different uh, um, command lines. And uh, we develop uh, uh, this in two ways using the Python Monasca uh, uh, client. I think uh, there is uh, one more dash that uh, they needed. Uh, that provides a Python uh, library, uh, and uh, uh, we developed even using the uh, uh, assessing the uh, REST API directly. 
uh, we developed again in Python, but this, the second way can be done in any, in any language. Uh, the, <clears throat> the difference in amount of code is that you need to write uh, more or less double the code uh, to manage everything instead of uh, uh, using the REST API because you need to uh, query the endpoint, uh, get data back, uh, uh, parse all the data, and this uh, really uh, faster and easy to use the Python Monasca client. And obviously you'd have to uh, use key, you'd have to manage your own keystone tokens and everything else. That's an extra step to that process. Okay. So <clears throat> we are at uh, more or less uh, the end of our presentation. And uh, I think, do, okay. do you? Uh, I suppose just as a quick overview in case anyone fell asleep, um, why this is relevant and useful. Um, we kind of talked about four things here. First of all, there was the agent plugins. So as is written in front of you there, it's just to an, a, extend what Monasca can do in terms of what it can monitor or how much it can monitor of those things. Um, the forwarder and or, uh, other notification systems just allows you to essentially inform more things that Monasca has discovered that something has happened that you want to know about. Uh, the reporting angle allows you to get direct access to what your monitoring system thinks is going on as opposed to kind of a third party kind of read out later that, that you can get your information directly from the horse's mouth, so to speak. And the last part there in terms of Nagios integration, considering Nagios and its clones are everywhere, it's kind of important that we can at least get data out of Manasca and into Nagios so that people's existing solutions can work well with it. It's just to make it more useful in general. So um, I think that's about it really. Um, Thanks very much. Any questions? Hi. Uh, during your integration with uh, Nagios, right, for the Monasca, is the data collected using the Monasca agent or is it through the Nagios Pro, uh, scripts? <clears throat> the data is, uh, um, okay, there is a Nagios script. Mm -hmm. So we developed a, a, a Nagios check that use the, the, uh, the, the Python client as a library. So uh, you, you can import uh, the, the Monasca client and then use uh, uh, the provided method to access Monasca through your Python script. OK. All right. That's this, this, this is the idea. Um, so you're not gathering any telemetry with Solometer, it's just done with uh, static checks? No. Scripts right now in Kafka <clears throat> is the message bus? No, we, we just use uh, uh, Monasca and uh, uh, data available in Monasca. Uh, this is especially because uh, uh, the <coughs> Hewlett Packard Enterprise uh, uh, OpenStack uh, distribution uh, use uh, uh, Selyoska, the Monasca, uh, interface to Celiometer that uh, does, uh, this does not allow alarms uh, to be notified outside. It just uh, uh, provides Celiometer with uh, statistical data that can be used uh, then uh, for uh, um, usage reporting and for billing, but uh, alarms uh, and events are not uh, forwarded to Celiometer in this uh, implementation that is uh, Celioska. Okay, and on, um, on, some, uh, <clears throat> on some admin channel chats on RSC, I've noted people talking about taking data from, um, from, from Manaska and building ML kind of analytics systems yeah. beyond that. Is yeah. that where you're extending that to? Uh, no, uh, the, the, the Manaska analytics is a little uh, way more complex than uh, the report that we created, okay? So it is uh, uh, real analytics about uh, right. the, the, the Monasca, so rules and, uh, and uh, algorithms running uh, on, on the data collected by Monasca is not just uh, a report with uh, sums and, uh, yeah. and mean. Yeah. Um, that doesn't seem to be an OpenStack, like a community project right now. Is, is that, am I wrong about that or is that going to become something available? Uh, I actually don't know because I'm not Okay. Following this, I, I, no, I, I'm not involved directly in this uh, part, and so. Cool. Okay. M maybe. Um, anyway.
Yeah, good talk. Thanks.